Good morning and welcome to First Christian Church. We're running a little bit behind this morning. Um, I know I'm receiving text wondering uh, where we are. So we're going to wait a few minutes to make sure people can join us on Facebook Live. What would help is if you shared the live stream this morning on your Facebook page so people can find us. Um, and a big shout out to our technical crew this morning who's been at the church since nine trying to work out some difficulties. But we will still create a space for God's grace and God's love to flourish. So we are glad you're with us this morning. So I'm going to be monitoring a few things. Again, let's just wait a couple minutes to make sure people can find us and they can uh, log on this morning. For those who have already joined us, please let us know where you're joining us from, whether it's Oklahoma, Scotland, Southern California, Northern California, Iowa, your basement. Just let us know so we can track where you're from and welcome you to this space during this time. So now that we do have folks coming on Facebook Live, I just want to say welcome to First Christian Church of Burbank this morning. Indeed, we are honored and humbled to have you worship with us this day and to be reminded of God's radical hospitality, that no matter who you are, no matter where you join us from, you are welcome here. A few things about the service this morning. One, we'll post the lyrics on Facebook Live as Britt, Zach, and Marina lead us in song. Also, this is an excellent time to grab your communion elements, whatever those may be, whether that's Diet Coke, uh, donut, bread, grape juice, if you have that in your refrigerator, Later in the service, we will break bread together. And then finally, if you have a prayer you would like to share with us this morning, feel free to comment in the Facebook Live. Um, again, there's a bit of a lag time between what we're doing here and what's happening there, but we'll make sure to incorporate those into the weekly email. Now again, wherever you're joining us from, know that we believe in God's love and God's grace, and we are glad you're here this morning. Let us continue in song. Sometimes the night was beautiful, sometimes the sky was so far away, sometimes it seemed to stoop so close. You could touch it, but your heart would break. Sometimes the morning came too soon. Sometimes the day could be so hot. There was so much work left to do, but so much you'd already done. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Sometimes I think of Abraham, how one star he saw had been lit for me. He was a stranger in this land I am that no less than he and on this road to righteousness sometimes the climb can be so steep I may falter in my steps but never beyond your reach oh God you are my God and I will ever praise you in your ways and step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days yes I will follow you all of my days and I will follow you all of my days and step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days
nothing I hold on to. There's 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 nothing I hold on to. And now we come, come to that time in the service in which we share prayers with one another, offering hope and grace to those we know and love and praying for those we don't even know. Um, in a few moments, I'll share the prayers from this community of faith. Uh, again, feel free to comment in the comment section and let us know what we should be praying for this morning. But as I offer a prayer, I will then end saying, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you in the comfort of your own home to say, hear our prayer. And so this morning, we give thanks to God for an incredible space to be with one another, to sing together, to pray with each other, and to reflect on God's word. Lord, in your mercy. We pray to God for health and healing for a myriad of people in our congregation and beyond, such as Sarah Hopmeyer's grandmother, Pam J for Beverly Watson's great granddaughter who was hospitalized this past week in Oklahoma. God, in your mercy. We pray for those who are unemployed and underemployed. May they be surrounded by comfort and peace in this most unpredictable time. God, in your mercy. We pray for those who are experiencing the fires, not only in California, but across the United States. We pray for those who are in the path of the fires, the first responders who are seeking to alleviate the disaster, and those who will come after during the cleanup. God, in your mercy. We pray for those who are in assisted living facilities and those who seek to care for them, such as Donna's mom, Janet, Mary, Marcia, Paul, and so many others. God, in your mercy. We give thanks for teachers, students, and parents as, those, as many return to school this past week and those who, around the country who will return in the coming weeks. We pray for peace, for patience, and for justice. God, in your mercy. And we pray for this world, for those who live all around this world, those who search for justice, those who yearn for hope, and those who pray for love. May the mystery of God's presence and God's grace surround all people and all creation. God, in your mercy, let us continue in this space of prayer with music. a child my family would travel down to western Kentucky where my parents were born. There's a backwards old town that's often remembered so many times that my memories are born. Daddy won't you take me back to Newlandburg County down by the Green River where paradise lay. Well I'm sorry my Sometimes we travel right down the Green River to the abandoned old prison down by Adrie Hill, where the air smelled like snakes and we'd shoot with our pistols, but empty pop bottles was all we would kill. And Daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County down by the Green River where paradise lay? Well, I'm sorry, my. for that. 
wrote it all down as the progress of a man. Daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County, down by the Green River where paradise lay? Well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late in asking. Mr. Peabody's gold train is holding away. When I die, let my ashes float down the Green River. Let my soul roll on up to the Rochester Dam. I'll be halfway to heaven with paradise waiting. Five miles away from wherever I am And Daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County Down by the Green River where paradise is laying well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late in asking Mr. Peabody's coat train is holding away Let's join together in a time of prayer. God of amazing grace and endless love, we come to you this morning in the midst of an imperfect world, a chaotic world. We turn to the mystery of your presence for peace, hope, and simple yet ordinary reminders of your love. This morning you have heard us name our prayers out loud, prayers for health and healing, prayers for comfort, prayers for uncertainty, and prayers in the midst of natural disasters. We simply ask that that same mysterious presence that is wrapped up in love and grace surround our collective lives, giving us peace where there's uncertainty, giving us hope where there's distress, and reminding us of love where there is deep discord. God, we also pray for this community of faith that we continually and boldly step into your call to love all regardless. We pray for this community of faith that we might continue to be a place of hospitality, spiritual development, and your grace. And finally, we pray for this world, for your entire creation. We pray for those seeking justice, May we experience your liberation. We pray for those who experience distress. May we ground ourselves in your hope. And finally, may you take that same amazing grace and unending love, weaving it into the very fabric of our lives, continually calling us to be your people and your kingdom in this world. We ask this all in your name. Amen. Luke 5, verses 37 to 38. Jesus told them a parable, and no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins and will be spilled, and the skins will be destroyed. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. Thank you, Sandy. Sometimes I am convinced there are two kinds of people in this world. I, <clears throat> I know we're not in a binary world, but travel with me for a minute to cleaning out closets and spaces in our homes. I believe there are those people who can do it with great speed and gusto, taking old objects, pictures, documents, and simply putting them in the places they need to be, whether that's in storage bins or filing cabinets and simply move on. And I believe there's a second kind of person, and that would be me, who, as I begin cleaning out a closet or a room, I get caught up in those pictures. I get caught up in those old objects telling stories. I've even been known as I prepare to move to call multiple friends and rehearse those stories as I go through all the things that probably just need to be thrown out. The truth is, there are a myriad of people like us that when we sit down on a floor to clean out a closet or a room or to get rid of old things, we dwell on those things, holding them, treasuring them, hearkening back to a different era and a different time. You know, the truth is, it's quite ordinary to do that, I think. 
And that's where we get the parables this morning. Last week, Aaron Wathen from Week of Compassion started us off on a new sermon series that for the next two months will focus on Jesus' parables. The parables that we can find in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The parables are a particular way in which Jesus opened up the marvelous and mysterious nature of God's kingdom and in some way broke open our own lives. Because the parables are just that, ordinary objects drawing our attention in. Jesus took ordinary objects and people from his own time and used those experiences and those examples to teach about God's love, to teach about ethics, to teach about call and the mystery of God's grace. Last week, Aaron Wathan talked about the mustard seed. Jesus uses a myriad of objects, fields, seeds, neighbors, salt, light, to talk about the inbreaking of God's presence and God's love. And so this day, we turn to an ordinary example to understand the ways in which God moves in this time and in this place. And so I return to those two people that exist in, our, in my world, those who are able to move without, without hindrance into new possibilities and new opportunities. But so many of us, when cleaning out a closet or cleaning out a room like me, take those photos and relive old times, take those objects and tell stories and even romanticize a history that wasn't quite there but we cling to it anyway. You know what? I invite you to take a moment, look around your own rooms and your own houses. I'm sure you have those objects and those things that trigger those memories that take you back to a different era and a different time. And that's not necessarily bad. It's not necessarily or inherently bad to travel to those spaces to rehearse those memories, to hold those objects, to gaze at those pictures. It's quite ordinary. But as we enter the parable that Sandy so wonderfully read this morning, we begin to understand that Jesus turns to two ordinary objects to talk about the need to move forward, to understand new paradigms and new ways of being in this world. See, William Salone Coffin talked about Jesus using parables as a way for Jesus to shift from the narrator to the hearer that takes the responsibility of the one who teaches and places it on us. And so these parables that are uttered from Jesus' mouth become a call to responsibility on our part. And so let's look at these ordinary objects that Jesus takes from the first century old wineskins and new wineskins. And they hint at a fundamental thing about the gospel, is that we as people of faith are called to turn our faces towards the present and the future. That that doesn't dismiss the history that brought us to this moment, but we as people of faith, if we are caught up in old paradigms, old language, and the past, we will be held captive in that space. For indeed, the parable that Sandy read talks about old wineskins and new wineskins. And those who know about wine understand that if you were to put new wine in old wineskin, it would simply burst and not only ruin the old wine, but it would ruin the new wine as well, falling to the ground and contaminating it. Now that, as I said, inherently doesn't mean old wineskins are bad. But that is a call to people of faith that if we constantly return to the past, we will burst. If we constantly sit on the floors of our closets and our living rooms, dwelling on those objects, those photos, that past history, we will simply burst and not only ruin those old memories, but contaminate ourselves as well prohibiting us from the future that God calls us to. Let's sit with that for a moment. If we sit on our floors and in our closets, trying to fit the new ways of being into old memories, we just might burst, ruining our history 
and contaminating our future. You see how Jesus, in his ingenious way, takes an ordinary common object and calls us into new ways of being. Over the past couple of weeks, I have been going through old documents, old wineskins of First Christian Church, Disciples of Christ of Burbank, California, thanks to a member who left countless documents behind. And there are remarkable things in these tattered pages. I think this annual report from 1968 used a typewriter. And as you glance over these pages, you can rehearse the memories of First Christian Church of Burbank and marvel at the things that they did, the conversations that they had, the language that they used. And I even see a few names that I recognize. And this old wineskin is remarkable and blessed and grace-filled and love-infused. But see, churches like First Christian Church of Burbank and so many others can get wrapped up in those pages, can be held captive by that history. And we, have, as people of faith, can be held in that space and again, as Jesus said, that old wineskin will eventually burst, ruining that history and then indeed contaminating ourselves. And so this is, I can find this time as no better time to talk about the new life that new wineskins offer. New ways of being, new ways of naming, new ways of being community, new ways of organizing ourselves. And yes, as individual peoples of people of faith, stepping into a future that we might not fully know, but indeed claiming the new ways of organizing who we are, new ways of worshiping, new ways of being in small group, new ways of studying the Bible, new ways of serving, new ways of talking about justice. Indeed, if we were to be caught in that old history of wineskin, we would burst. But if we embrace this new future that we're stepping into, we indeed embrace the essence of Jesus' parable, a call to new life, renewal, transformation, hope, love, and God's grace. I have heard the phrase over and over and again, I have used it. I just want to get back to normal. Raise your hand in your living rooms or your couches. If you've whispered that phrase, said it, oh, I just want to get back to normal. Okay. So do I. Frankly, I want to get back to having potlucks. I want to get back to sitting in people's kitchens. I want to get back to hugging people, to loving people, to being physically present. And that's okay. But what we're reminded of in this time, most unpredictable time, that to return to normal has a dangerous tone to it. To return to normal, if we're not careful, means we might return to a space in which not everybody has access to healthcare that they so desperately need. To return to normal returns to a realization and an ignoring of the racial violence that exists in our world. If we're not careful, that phrase returning to normal might mean returning to complacency, to silence, to an injustice that continues to haunt us. But if we embrace this remarkable parable, we are called as individuals and as people of faith and as a church to put one foot in front of the other and to begin to create a new world, a new normal, and a new way of being in which those we work, study, and pray with are honored in their complexity and in their God-given identities that we as people of faith push and challenge for a society that lets go of some of what held us captive before this season.
that we as people of faith begin to try to build that world that indeed embraces the new wineskin that we're beginning to live into and pour our lives into. But indeed, there are afternoons in which I've found myself sitting on my floor, yearning to return to normal. And there is a safety and a comfort in that. Don't get me wrong. But we as people of faith are in some mysterious, bold, prophetic way called to step into a new reality. Work for it. Struggle for it. Ask for it. Pray for it. Organize for it. And as for this church, I will always be in awe of what has come before us. But I will be overjoyed and excited as we step into this new future. And so what does this new future look like? I'm not entirely clear, but I do know it involves making space for imperfect worship services online. I know it involves hanging a Black Lives Matter banner outside our building. I know it involves opening up our sidewalk for creative space for people to talk about grief, pain, justice, hope, God's love. I do know it means welcoming members from a virtual community who might be a thousand miles away from here, but still praying for them, standing with them, and building a world in which we all can live together. You know, there might be two kinds of people in this world those like me who cling to that, wanting to be normal again, gazing at those pictures, excitingly reading old annual reports. We're okay. We're inherently good, but we must challenge ourselves to live into being new wineskins for a new time. New wine that will quench new thirsts new people that will embrace God's love. You see, when Jesus spoke in parables, he took ordinary things to talk about God's love and grace. It is my contention that we are ordinary people called to do extraordinarily new things. May we embrace that future and that reality Not only this morning, but in the days, weeks, months, and even years to come. Giving thanks for the ways in which God calls us forward, one foot in front of the other, embracing God's love and God's grace along the way. Thanks be to God. Amen. morning, family of God. Um, Speaking of patience, I'm going to ask for your patience because today um, I not only have a headache, but I'm apparently having one of those days where the the sermon uh, personally attacked me. (laughs) No, 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 no. Brandon, I know it wasn't on purpose. And you, you can't know that I'm one of those people and have always been one of those people that when I go to organize something, um, I get mired in the memories of it just always. So um, it, it, 
it was just a little little on point for me today. So I'm a little bewildered by that. Um, and I am one of those people that wants things to go back to normal, but I know it's not happening. Um, I know it's never going to be as it was again, that it's gonna have to be something new. Um, some of the things that I'm longing for, seeing my students' faces, um, not having to worry about what's behind me or who's gonna walk through the frame and are they properly dressed? <laughs> Um, there, there are so many things that I miss. Um, there are so many things that I'm tired of. I, I had to take a break from my dog the other day because we had just been together for like five months. So I needed that little break. Um, there are so many new things to learn. Um, just in my job, we have three new programs that were using all together to try and teach. There are so many new things. Um, so I, I know it's difficult, um, but there are two new things that maybe not new to some of you. I am very sure that some of you are already using these, um, but the first, the first new wineskin that I wanna point out to you is on our lovely First Christian Church of Burbank website. If you go all the way down to the bottom after our lovely pictures, there's a donate button down there. So you can continue to give to the church and all the missions that we try to believe in and support every and support our church going into the future. So that's one new tool. Um, and it's pretty easy. Like once you get to the website, click and go. Yay. Um, and, but the other one is an old thing made new. And this is not the first time this has happened with this. It's your communion. And while, while we are, while we are all having different things for our communion, it is still that meal. It is still bringing us together. It is still us partaking in the body together, us, even though we are so far apart. So as um, you take your communion elements, please remember that though you might be alone in your house, though um, it might seem like a lot of new things, <laughs> might be a lot of new wineskins, um, it's just, it is, it is still a little bit the same. Take, take that grain, that little bit of the sameness moving forward as we take our communion and say our prayers. Thank you. of God. This morning we take whatever bread that we have and together we remember that ancient story when Jesus lounged around a table with his friends like they had so many times before. And as they gathered around this table, he took some bread and he broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat and do this in remembrance of me. And in a similar way, Jesus took a cup. And after giving thanks, he poured it out and said, this is the cup of the new covenant, which is given for you. Take and drink and do this in remembrance of me. And now First Christian Church, I invite you to take a piece of the bread that you have and to drink of that cup. And we will do this together. And then we will recite the Lord's Prayer as one.
Please join me in prayer. Our creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Here are some of our announcements for today. After our worship service, we will be having coffee and conversation time. It is a great way to catch up with other members of this congregation and see how they are doing. Here's the Zoom ID. Even though we are still having worship online, our congregation and staff are still active within the community and are continuing our work as a congregation. With the many missions we support, these missions include Burbank Temporary Aid, Relay for Life, Project Mercy, and Family Promise, just to name a few. By giving your offerings to our First Christian Church, we can continue to make a positive difference to the people in our community and to the world. And here are several ways we can support and give. You can give online by visiting firstchristianburbank.org. You have that? Mm -hmm. Click the link that Kevin posts in the comments section. Text give. Good. Go. Or you can support by, you can support the postal service by uh, <laughs> giving through regular mail. So <laughs> I have another announcement too, and it actually has to do with the, uh, what would have been this past week with Family Promise, we were to host Family Promise uh, families this past week at First Christian Church. Um, we did support the program and we continue to do so. There are four mothers and four children in the program and we provided uh, breakfast items and lunch items and other items for them for the, for the week. We continue to be uh, supportive of Family Promise in a lot of different ways. Besides the 90-day shelter program that we've been supporting, there are several other um, programs that Family Promise is involved with. And in fact, since COVID started, there have been 31 families who have gone through the program and been uh, rehoused and are supporting themselves through housing just since, since COVID started. So just wanted to make that announcement that we are continuing to do that and we'll do so again when we host uh, families, either in our church next year or in the future uh, by, by providing meals for them. And those are our announcements for today. Brandon. Thanks, Dave and Sandy. Um, a few announcements this morning. One is I'm gonna be away this week and we'll be without communication. And so if an emergency comes up or you have questions, please contact our Director of Family Ministries, Reverend Beth McQuitty. Um, she will get you the resources you need or, or find a way to do that. Um, but again, if you send me an email or a text this week, I won't be able to reply till the end of the week. That being said, our Thursday evening prayer check-in service is still happening Thursday at 7 p.m. Um, there will be information in the weekly email about that and posted on Facebook. But that is to say our Wednesday evening study will not be happening this week. And finally, for any of you guests and visitors out there, if you want more information about this community of faith, say something in the comments section, send us an email, a Facebook message, find a way to get a hold of us, and we'll make sure to incorporate you into our communication. And a special thank you to our tech team and our entire worship team this morning. It was an unpredictable day, but we still rest in God's grace. And so, Britt, uh, Zach, and Marina, I'm turning it over to you.
of God. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return, return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the love of God, the light of Christ, and the power and communion of that Spirit be with us all. Let us go in peace. Amen. <laughs>